smoke detector, ketchup packet, cannon, pepper stomp. Hello! <laughs> I love how it just opened up. It was me. Right. Look at me, a fucking idiot. <laughs> He's like, <laughs> my bad. Welcome to the show. <laughs> fucking Zach. <laughs> there. Very there. He, he was, he's been perfect for right. two months. And they blew it. And now he's a fucking idiot. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Good to <laughs> see you. <laughs> welcome. <laughs> welcome to Is We Dumb. I'm Dan. I'm Joe Paisley. And uh, we are also forever known as Fred Flintstone and Barney Rubble. And I, if it stops, I will be surprised. <laughs> Uh, we showed these off on the uh, the live show, mm-hmm. so if you have no idea, oh, you don't even have your fucking cup. I yeah, wh- my cup my cup is not here. I took because we just recorded. I'll tell you what happened. We recorded Scared to Death earlier today. I didn't want to have a confusing Fred and Barney cup in there, and then I forgot to put it back. But I, I have a nice Fred Flintstone cup that that Aaron got Joe's it, wife. Yes, I don't know if Dang we can it. if we can see it. We well, show go to that camera. I like this as Pizza Hut. Mine. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna hold my glass out there to match. Even though mine is not the Perfect. right glass. It's a little Barney, and then this side has a little, little mm-hmm. skateboarding Barney. Aw, uh, Barney. But we have a we have a Barney and Fred. Thank you, to Aaron, uh, for picking those up. She felt she saw them at an antique shop, That's and awesome. she went. She gasped. <gasps> she went. Oh, wow. What? Oh, they are. How much are these? Oh, six hundred dollars. <laughs> Well, <laughs> what what am I supposed to do? I have to get them. <laughs> Got to get them. So I, I, I love them. that it does kind of work. Where it's like I'm a little taller than you, Fred. A little taller than Barney. Hair he color. Has blonde hair. I have dark. You know, almost like like a very dark brown. Mm-hmm. And uh, <laughs> and you're so, an amazing bowler. I'm an amazing bowler. Everybody knows that I bowl really well. <laughs> <laughs> I run. I my car. My truck is powered by my feet. <laughs> I have a dinosaur for a pet. So they, many similarities. They sell those things. We should get one of those little Flintstone cars. <laughs> Little like, Flintstone car? We have the next b- Bad Magic Gathering where we mm-hmm. have all the fans show up mm-hmm. and we just roll up in one of those. <laughs> Our feet are bleeding and mangled, but it's worth it. The joke <laughs> has joke. been made. <laughs> and we, the rest of the night, we're in a wheelchair. What a, what a great way to have like a permanent limp <laughs> just for the rest of your life. And people are like, no, but seriously, what happened? Well, <laughs> I came out, came up to this party in this uh, Flintstone mobile mm. and it you know mangled the bottom of my feet. But just like just the saddest backstory, the most pathetic for like, like a severe injury. Wow, it was like for a uh, for, for like charity, a, a big or? event, a charity or something. No, no. I just thought it'd be funny. <laughs> that'd be funny. And I, like three people were there, and they saw it. And those well, didn't, uh, everyone else was inside, but the three people thought it was really. Didn't funny. your feet hurt? Did, didn't you know you should have stopped? Yeah, but I had a couple blocks ago, and I just you know I I'd committed. I already bought this Fred Flintstone's mobile, and I didn't want to you know just kind of stop there and I'll have it all be for nothing. So I just kept going on my mangled feet. It's not even the go part. That would hurt. It's the stop it's part. The br- it's the break. Can you imagine? Yeah, you, oh my god! If you really got it going down a hill, and the only way you could stop, <laughs> you're either going to smash into something, or that's option A. Uh, <laughs> option A: smash into something and possibly die. Mm-hmm. Option B: stop yourself by taking all the skin off your bottom of your feet. Yeah, grind it down to an ankle bone. Blah! Just <laughs> now, well, let's, let's, new new stilts. Let's not get the Flintstones card. <laughs> new stilts for Joe and Dan. <laughs> <laughs> and if we ever pull that off, you'll see a picture of it on our on our socials. Better better story when people are like, "Why do you have two prosthetic feet?" And you're just like, "I had to stop." <laughs> what? Wait, what? I, I was on a hill. Ba-da, and I had to stop. <laughs> <laughs> I was on a hill and I had to stop. Okay, okay. And the, and the new feet you get are just Goodyear. <laughs> you get actual tires for feet. Because that's the smart play. Uh, instead of like no longer ever doing that again, that's your solution. You're just like, well, I know where I fucked up. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't get Goodyear treads in the bottom of my regular feet. So now that I've already like rubbed my fucking feet completely off, <laughs> I should at least get Goodyear prosthetic feet. <laughs> this show <laughs> brought to you by Goodyear. <laughs> Imagine going to like an orthopedic specialist or whatever, and you're trying to like kind of shoehorn. Like they're like, yeah, this we got what, these uh, these what, great that, prosthetic feet. You're gonna be able to walk. The fine. best we ever had. What, what's on the bottom of them? <laughs> oh, it's, it's like a nice kind of like metal polycarbonate. <laughs> it's, some a foot, kind of, it's a foot thing. It's like a, you know, like built for walking. Mm, yeah, yeah, but uh, <laughs> is there like a tire tread that you could attach to the bottom? Fucking what? <laughs> no, just like if you wanted to for funsies. Could you put like a thick tire tread for like, I don't know, or like a, better yet, like a brake pad. Here, fo- could fo- you put fo- a, <laughs> follow me. Come take a look at this. Can you take him outside and show him your car? <laughs> look, <laughs> this is what I'm driving. And here's how I stop. I have to throw my feet down on the pavement. Why don't you get a new car? How about you go fuck yourself? <laughs> Do you know how expensive cars are? You know how expensive these fucking shoot, these tire feet are going to be? He's like, he gives you shit, and I'm like, listen, motherfucker, this Fl- Flintstone mobile is paying your goddamn salary right now. That's why I'm your patient, because of this fucking Flintstone mobile. That's why I just had to get $200,000 feet, okay? 
<laughs> and then just going to this whole explanation. It's like, look, it looks really simple on the cartoon. <laughs> they make it look so easy. They do it over and over again. They never have bloody feet. So I thought, why not try it in real life? Sometimes the kids help. But in my car, they can't. They can't. Their, their feet don't, they don't, I'm all, I'm all brakes. The, <laughs> the kids' feet, they don't even touch the pavement. Like, they think they're doing it, and they're, they're not really doing shit. It's me. And that's why they look like this. And you mm-hmm. have your little stilt, like your ankle bone stilts. Walking Yuck. around in the in the foot place. Oh God! <laughs> Would those be all season feet or studded feet? See, I mean, yeah, that's something to think about. Gotta have mm-hmm. a variety. Of Interchangeable. Feet. If you live in the Northwest, you gotta have studded feet. Spare feet. Oh man, you're taking your Flintstone mobile like up like a snowy going steep to, steep road. You're like, going oh, to I gotta, Schweitzer. I gotta walk on over and put on my put on my t- feet chains. <laughs> pull over. Is the chaining area? You can just pull over and change out your feet. <laughs> you, uh, you have like different prosthetic feet for like different seasons. You have your chain prosthetic, like studded, yeah. so you can really dig into the fucking ice as exactly. you walk your Flintstone mobile up the hill. <laughs> <laughs> I love that God, in a I mean, concept like that, it would just be so much easier to just walk. <laughs> just bring shit like in a cart behind you, maybe. Instead of rolling a literal stone a steamroller. St- a giant fucking stone <laughs> car that'd have to be so heavy and cumbersome <laughs> to travel doesn't with. Have to, it doesn't have two front and back, right? It's just one solid beam on the front and back, right? Like a steamroller? Am I, I, am I wrong? I this, think uh, there's a steamroller on the front and the back. But, I I, but, it, but it's been a while since I thought about the, the Flintstone mobile. I think there's two steamrollers on it. D- are we two there? giant stone rolling pins. The kids, are we there yet? Shut the fuck up! <laughs> and your feet are just on fire. Your feet are destroyed. Get there when we get there! But you have the most muscular <laughs> upper legs, literally of anyone who's ever lived. Like you, you, do, you finally go into the gym, and people are just blown away. Like they think, like it must be some kind of like sleight of hand, some like trickery, where you're squatting <laughs> four thousand pounds. Right. You're just like, how the fuck? Or I guess it'd be leg what? press. They think that, they you're think just pushing they... four thousand pounds. On le- like you have everyone in the gym sitting on the leg press sled, <laughs> right. and you're just like, I don't know. He just he just did forty five reps easy. Is anyone else here can sit on this sled? You're like, oh, this, this is nothing is compared to my easy. car. I, you walk in, and they think they're looking in a carnival mirror. It's like, what the fuck? Like one of those funny shaped mirrors right. where it makes your legs all big and your body all small. <laughs> right. Like, no, that's just me. It's Fred. <laughs> Fred and Barney. <laughs> your calves are 50 pounds each. <laughs> oh, dude. Just the world's biggest calves. <laughs> well, you, hold on. A whole different debate. Okay, well, yeah. and we'll move on here in a second. Yeah. But if like you have to be DD in the no, road right. is treacherous. Okay. It's going to be hard to get a DD. Because someone else would be like, I'm not going to fucking walk your car home. <laughs> come on come on man true come on do it come on do it people are no, like I'm not, I, I'm I not can't I'm this. not strong enough to drive you home all that can fit in the, in the front seat they, they have a tiny <laughs> foot sliver and the rest of it's your fucking thighs <laughs> from <laughs> pushing your car around <laughs> alright alright anyway okay. anyway that's fun <laughs> let's move on okay um, we do have a very fun super uh, sorry very super most important starting question mm-hmm. and we'll get there in just a second but I do want to remind you guys that we have plenty of merch and we have some new merch coming next week and uh, some more after that. So if you're not in tune with going to iswedumb.com or to badmagicmerch.com, check it out. Got plenty of merch there right now. And I'm telling you, the ones that are coming in the weeks, uh, the ones that are coming in the weeks to come. There's a sentence. Uh, it, it, it's amazing. And I cannot wait to print those out next week. So what Joe's trying to say is there's stuff there now, but don't buy it. Uh, that's, that's what I heard. That's what I meant to say. Don't buy it. Except Wait a few weeks. Maybe buy the just don't. Because okay. that's also in there. Okay, that's in there. Okay. Which also represents what I just said. <laughs> you got it. I got it. I got okay, it. cool. All right, let's move on and get our brains warmed up. Okay. Oh, fuck. <laughs> the very super most important starting question. <laughs> Sorry, what were you going to say? I love that. Uh, yeah, I, I didn't get my huh oh. before you hit the button. But all I was going to say is now that we are a recording away from the live show, thank everyone. Oh, yeah. uh, I want to thank everybody who came to the live show, watched the live show, and uh, so much fun. Uh, I, me, like, just us watching footage of the fish challenge afterwards, mm. g- uh, genuinely cracking up, which maybe is very narcissistic, <laughs> but it was very funny. I didn't realize how funny it was to watch two grown men struggle over the fish <laughs> and just the difference in our personalities. Just My the, favorite part. The contrast was, yeah. was one was You're like, puking I'm, and crying. I'm going to do this. The other one was like, I want to go home. Right. You were like, <laughs> you were like perfect. puking, tears are running out of your eyes. And then I had to psych myself up, which did work. Mm-hmm. And then, but I didn't realize how crazy I looked when I'm just screaming, they're going to kill my family. They're going to kill my family. And then just, rah, 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 rah. they got a gun to my head. They got a gun to my head. <laughs> just, rah, rah. Just You're screaming that. And all I have is a puke bucket to my face <laughs> going, because ah! like, yeah. I would rather smell my own puke yeah. than that fish. It was like an apocalyptic type mm. site. And I'd f- do it again. I don't care. <laughs> you know, what was weird is once I ate the one fermented stinky fish. I mean, it still what didn't smell great or anything, but then I was like, oh, I could eat more of these 
It's probably I'm probably gonna have like you know have a terrible situation later. Mm. <laughs> but it's like my body was like, okay, this is terrible, but we can handle this. We can do it. We can do it. We can do it. I squished it. I had some in. I'm pretty sure it came back out. Uh, I yeah. stuck, stuck a couple in my mouth, but I I couldn't do it. It's an interesting like like just instinctual reaction. Just that gag <laughs> reflex kicks in. Yeah. <laughs> but that was, but it was so fun. The yeah, getting you. to take the show to a more extreme place than YouTube and places will mm-hmm. was also fun. And we just uh, we had a blast, and, and the feedback's been good. So thank you. And guess what? What? Another one coming. Another one coming. We'll, Down the road. We'll do we'll another one at the, at the end of the year. Yes. Yeah. A lot of people want to know, how does it smell in there now? Oh, perfectly oh, fine. That's what I was going to say, too. Yeah, and actually, we had a good plan. We had a tarp. We picked everything up right after the show, went, double-bagged it, set it outside, and then we Febrezed the shit out of the the studio, the hallway outside. Candles, fans. We got candles, fans going. Uh, so much Febreze. The next morning, I came in early to make sure the building didn't stink for everyone else, and... Uh, I lit the candles only to get the smell of the Febreze out of the air because <laughs> right. we went so crazy with Febreze. Overcompensated. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> like the amount of, uh, like when there's too much perfume right. and it makes you a little sick and yep. you're like, God damn it. It was that, but with Febreze. I wish it was just poop. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I wish it was just poop smell and not perfume and poop. Yep. Yeah, yep. exactly. Uh, okay, so this uh, this Would You Rather was sent in by Dummy Danny. Okay. Uh, Danny sent one in a long a long time ago. I believe he was the uh, accordion legs guy. Oh, nice. And belly button yeah. guy. Now, I'm not sure if uh, Danny just sits so around fun. and does LSD, but we're in that ballpark <laughs> again. Okay. Would you rather yeah. everyone you find attractive turn oh. into a praying mantis or have a smoke detector for a penis? Oh, my God. <laughs> This is so weird. Danny, goddamn. Everyone, your brain. I love your brain, bud. Everyone you find attractive turns into a praying mantis. <laughs> so that's that's who you have to you have to have sex with a praying mantis somehow. Sure. Or feel uh, bad. Or or maybe you're not attracted to praying mantises. I know, so you just don't get you're really you're absent. Mm. You're just not gonna have you're gonna be surrounded by praying mantises and you're never gonna have sex again. Because there is the the thing about having sex with a praying mantis. Don't they, they eat the head of the... The females, I believe, eat the heads of the males. They, mm. they chop the heads of the males off after mating. Which is, I think, pretty fucking hot. Pretty fucking dangerous. Bad girl. Or naughty, <laughs> naughty girl. Naughty. Naughty. Looking for a soft daddy. Sure, she's going to cut my fucking head off. A soft neck daddy. Oh, but before then... <laughs> mm. You're, you're going to end on I'm the best come, sex of your life. I'm going to come so hard before she cuts my fucking head off and kills me. <laughs> Right? What a world. <laughs> what, what a world. Who, well, how did that evolve? Like, how was, <laughs> why was that... The thing. I don't even know if we're right. I th- I think that's how it is, though. Zach would know. I think that's correct. Okay, is that correct? Cool. Thank you. Um, and then the other... I didn't look it up or anything. <laughs> well, when, you know. Fine. Three idiots. We'll, we'll look it up later. Three and out of three. And the smoke detector for a penis, you also just don't get to have sex, because a smoke detector is not a functional <laughs> penis shape. Okay, well... You have a big disc. I, I'm, I'm a... But I'm also going to assume that it has to be able to come. Like, it has to be able okay. to do something. So somebody kind of just rubs your smoke detector <laughs> that's stuck where your penis should be. And then you can, but like, you can't please, you can't please anybody with that. Sure. I don't you, think. You could. I mean. Someone who's just into noises and stuff. Not well. It's, it's just the wrong shape. Like, mm. a, like a hockey puck shaped. <laughs> but that's not the even, right shape for some hole. You know that. <laughs> but it needs to be deeper. <laughs> like, it, it doesn't go, like, a, a, a they smoke make detector. different size smoke detectors. They don't make a dildo shaped smoke detector that I'm aware of. Not yet. Not yet. There's just not enough. Uh, there's not enough for sample audience out there. <laughs> I, I picture the <laughs> the praying mantis situation yeah. in speed dating, <laughs> which I don't know why that's so funny to me. <laughs> Where you're going around these different right. tables, and <laughs> and if you're like, oh my god, she says something that makes you like kind of, yeah, you're yeah. like, oh wow, I really like that, and she goes, yeah, Wah! yep, yep. It's <laughs> <laughs> like this shit. God damn it. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Right. Next, like the bell rings. You go off the next one. You're like, I- I'm warning you. Please just be repulsive. What a curse. <laughs> what a curse where it's like you start just spending more time with people you're not attracted to just so they don't, just so they don't turn into giant praying mantises. <laughs> and then I just picture you're having like you've known this girl for a long time, like totally platonic, not into friend her at zone. all. Friend zone. Total shit. friend zone. Like hard friend zone. Mm-hmm. But then one night you're having, you're, you know, sharing your souls with each other. You're having some drinks. And then all of a sudden, just like that little spirit spark kind of hits or you're like you know i fucking becca's cool as shit mm-hmm. and then all of a sudden <laughs> <laughs> no no <laughs> right. fuck me jason ah, fuck me it's it's weird weird shit. <laughs> <laughs> and the smoke detector for a penis i mean i don't know there's always yeah. there's the firefighter fantasy uh, does that work like do you just show up and look i saved your life with this and it's your dick huh maybe they didn't test their batteries 
Maybe then, but but still, but the, the problem to me is okay. You're, let's say you're a fucking ripped up dude. You get your firefighter suit on. You mm. show up there into that fantasy. Little sweaty, little dirty. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then, but then you throw it on your pants, and there's just like a plastic <laughs> box, like little disc with a light on it, where a dick should be, and that's terrifying. Robo. Any that's any, Robocop. <laughs> any romance you've built immediately <laughs> ends when you have like a battery powered, flashing like LED light dick <laughs> down there. Like you'd think. But a guy, I, I have been surprised in this world True, more times than I can count. That's true. There could be fetishes out there. You know, like people have like a, they want a weird disc and, shaped dick. And it says that it's a smoke detector. It doesn't say that it's not shaped like a penis. Oh, so okay. So maybe that the changes penis it. is just a smoke detector where, I don't know, like a, it, that's just the way that it is. It'll beep when the batteries get low. <laughs> if you, Okay. If you, if you, if your penis is shaped like a penis. Looks like a penis, but also has a but also superpower? functions at a <laughs> functions as a uh, smoke detector. Then to me, this is easy. <laughs> then I definitely want the smoke detector penis because that only comes up every once in a while, and when it does come up, it's fucking great, <laughs> right? Like Bitch, that, guess what? Saved your life. Yep, you're yeah. welcome. You have the only dick on earth that truly saves lives. <laughs> like how great people is just that? hire you? Like yeah. hey, 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 Joe, can you sleep over tonight? <laughs> my my batteries are low. My smoke detector. Yeah, yeah. no problem. <laughs> you know where it sucked to have a smoke detector dick? Hmm. Camping. Oh, man. You can't, be anywhere, you can't be anywhere near the fire. <laughs> uh, you can't work a grill. At a concert? Right. You're not going to barbecue? No. At a concert? <laughs> oh, my God. That's pretty funny. Somebody lights up a joint next to you. <laughs> beep, 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 beep. Sorry, that's, that's so, just my dick. Sorry about that. Yeah, I can't turn it off. Super bright light. Your whole pants are lighting up. Right. That's that's embarrassing. How great would it be if your smoke detector dick, the only way to get it off, to like turn up, is to come? Mm. So you're like, hey, you got you guys, you you tired of the noise? Well, we can we can fix it. Like, listen, I who wants who wants to fix it? I know that you're shocked. Yes, I have a smoke detector penis. Right. But you're so don't be surprised when I tell you it don't turn off till you make me come. Oh my you god! Look straight in their eyes. You're like what? <laughs> right. Like listen, it's, it's already weird, isn't it? Yeah. I'm used to the noise. So what? I'm used to the noise. <laughs> I can handle this for 12 hours. I'm not going anywhere. Oh my God, shut that dick up! I'm gonna, somebody, somebody <laughs> shut that dick up! <laughs> and you're like, nah, I'm not jerking it off. And I'm not leaving. I, I'm not aroused. Some, help right. me. Some, yeah, you wanna, you wanna take care of it? You're sick of the noise. <laughs> it, look, you don't like the noise, that's your problem. And I can tell you how to fix it. You can suck this dick. <laughs> I just imagine that beep, that beep <laughs> noise, that like getting muffled by mouths and asses and vaginas. Beep, beep, oh my god. Beep, 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 and then I picture beep, 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 beep. <laughs> I picture this group of people furious with you where um the, your dick has gone off but you've also had a lot of whiskey <laughs> and you just can't finish. Just I've never thought about a, 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 a limp a limp uh smoke detector. <laughs> <laughs> I just picture there's a, Wake up! There's a team of people just come on, just fucking come. Beep, like like beep, just beep, four beep, people beep. working together trying to get like they're jerking. Do you, you like off. ass play? What, what do you, do you like? <laughs> what do you like? I, I drank too much. You're I'm sorry. Pass, you you fuck your dick you off and out? you passed out. <laughs> you, you're giving, oh. They're giving you CPR like a, a chick sit on your face. Like Smelling whatever you're salts. into. You got a fucking dildo in your ass and three people on your dick. And just beep, beep, beep at a Sugar Ray concert. Like, <laughs> Sugar Ray. I love the fact that that's what happened. <laughs> it's, I mean, it just seemed like a good place for that to happen. Uh, what was their big song? Uh, uh, they had a bunch of them. And then, baby, don't go away. Oh, man. I Something can't about the think of bed, it now. Bed I, I'm the morning. Oh, my goodness. My thoughts, man. That's not Sugar Ray. That is. is it? Oh, it is Sugar Ray. Yes, it is. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, my God. I'm picturing like Sugar Ray. And oh well, god, other bands of that era. It's some weird. Nah, what? Sugar Ray, <laughs> Eve Six. <laughs> yeah, Eve Six. Damn it! I can't. Lit. I, it doesn't matter. Lit. Was Lit. From that one. That, yeah, that was another one. Yeah. Oh god. That, that anyway, is, that those concerts. For that. And you're yeah. passed out. You got whiskey, fucking smoke detector. <laughs> <laughs> Where's the reset button? Like there's, there's a little test button on your ball sack. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna pick smoke detector dick. Yeah, after I, all that. I think me too. It, the other just, one's a horror show. The other one's a never-ending uh, horror movie. The other one, I'm like, yeah, I'll go with that. And like, my kids, like everyone, you, Zach, everyone just turns into a fucking praying mantis. You're attracted to your kids? I love that them. Was a, that was a hold on. Oh. Hold on. Didn't say, didn't say love them. It said attracted, hold didn't Hold on. Okay. Zach, call the police. Call CPS. Done. But right I also, now. But I also said... <laughs> You and Zach. I just hear two bugs talking to me. What's going on? Lindsay, uh, your kids? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Zach's like, I don't know what he's talking about. He just, <laughs> he just hears two mantises. I thought uh, I said love, not attracted to. I don't. I don't, I don't, I don't okay, so my, my wife is now a fucking praying mantis. 
Fine. They're better. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> that, that's okay. People I loved. Anyway, thanks, Danny, and thanks for doing drugs. Let's move on to uh, our next segment. Zach, go. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Um, excuse me. So we've only done this segment one other time. Yeah. Um, excuse me. Is uh is a place where we talk about either items that we can't or uh or like just like machinery or things that we use every day that we cannot fucking stand. Yep. Or as a collective, humanity does right that we can't stand. Yeah. So yeah. the last time we brought up um excuse me, it was about bathtubs. Too and small. we got a lot we got a lot of good feed up, feedback about it. A lot of people on board they said, Why are they so fucking Standard small? Standard bathtub size too small. Super small people were like, Don't make them bigger because then I'm gonna drown. Oh, interesting. Which is a, f- a fair, fair point. Fair and point. Then, and then we brought it like maybe putting a false wall at the bottom that you can scoot forward and back depending on how tall you mm. are. So that you don't you don't drown. That's smart. Yeah. And then someone's like, just buy a bigger bath. I'm like, how about fucking redo my whole bathroom because it's all shaped around the bathtub? <laughs> so that's out too. Okay. So what I'm getting at is that's what um excuse me is all about and this week we're going to talk about something that i have man there was a there was a point in my life where i actually started looking into existing patents on this oh a reason why you're really upset by this i'm a i'm a big fan of this particular item Mm -hmm. and i don't understand why they made them so small Mm -hmm. i'm talking about my dick (laughs) jk i'm talking about ketchup packets you're a big condiment guy (laughs) ketchup packets Mm -hmm. okay when you, 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 okay, you, you tell me, here's, here's the biggest evidence you have. If you're like, I don't know, man, this seems like the right serving for ketchup packets. When you ask for ketchup at a, at a drive through Yeah. How many do they give you? Oh, 700? That's because they're not fucking big enough. Right. So if they were to just up the size of these fucking ketchup packets, mm-hmm. not only could they reduce waste of the millions of ketchup packets, yeah. and, and they oftentimes overshoot. Yep. Again, with going to Taco Bell and getting the hot sauce packets. Yep. Like they could just give you one or two, and instead they give you fifteen, and right. then you use eight of them, then throw yeah. away you know the remaining. They're way too small. They're way too small. And you know, and what? I don't understand why that is. One place has figured it out at least, and I forgot about this, but I now I remember. Okay, when I would go to the Minneapolis airport, they have a Chick Fil A, mm. and Chick Fil A does little cartons, like right. little mini cartons, and and I do actually remember th- looking forward to the right amount of ketchup. <laughs> and I remember like they have good waffle cut fries, but also I'm like. I'm gonna, grab, I'm gonna grab one of those little cartons of ketchup, and it's gonna be totally enough ketchup for my fry enjoyment. And they give you the the option: you can peel it off yep. for a dipping sensation, or you can squeeze it out the corner and squeeze it's it onto your your perfect. French fry or whatever it, it is. And it took 50 years for someone to figure that out. <laughs> and then and, and everyone else is still like, no, no, we're stuck with the small ones. Everyone's like, no, thank you. And I don't know if it's because they all uh, back in 1914, yeah, they made 800 billion ketchup packets, and they just have to use them all. How great would that be if you <laughs> did some detective work and you found out that all of these little tiny ketchup packets were actually made in 1914? <laughs> like th- they made like 40 trillion ketchup packets. Somebody went fucking insane <laughs> making it, and there's just some city somewhere That's like all like they are. Trenton, New Jersey, <laughs> has 15 square miles of warehouses that have nothing but ancient ketchup packets in them. <laughs> And they're like, they're still using them. They're like, well, when, when we're done with these, <laughs> I guess we'll get a bigger ketchup packet There's like this huge conspiracy. Like, people are living. Yeah. They have apartments. They're all built out of ketchup packets. <laughs> like, the insulation is ketchup packets. Right. Like, because they're trying to figure out what they can do with all these fucking tiny ketchup packets. But it is. But you're right. It, Cars it, it, are filled <laughs> with ketchup packets. <laughs> it's like, I don't Where are we putting these things? I don't, what, what else do we do with them? Like, they, they have a, like a doll, like a yeah. bear. And then one day the, the leg rips a little bit and you open it up with ketchup packets. There's like a little stuffed animal. We were talking earlier today. There was an irrigation water shortage in parts mm-hmm. of the country. And they figured out that they can just like somehow uh, uh, quench the plant's thirst with ketchup packets. <laughs> and they just use millions of ketchup packets on these fields to fucking grow the soybeans or whatever. They've been trying for over a century to figure out how to get rid of these things. But it just it doesn't, is weird. It doesn't make sense. It's been so long. And you're right. You always need so many of them. And then kind of in that same vein. they're messy. Vein, they're, they're messy. messy. They're hard to use. In that same vein of the same kind of food, uh, ballpark hot dogs. Here, here's my okay, complaint. Okay. Here's my um. Uh, excuse me. Uh, the foot long hot dogs. I've been to a lot of ballparks where they they have their like advertise their foot long hot dogs, and they are foot long hot dogs, but the bun is like six inches. <laughs> And it's like the bun fucking technology has not adapted to the hot dog length in decades. Yeah. And it's like, why am I getting a fucking tiny ass bun <laughs> to hold this gigantic goddamn hot dog? And it's been that way, again, my entire life. Beginning Just get a bigger fucking bun. <laughs> right. so, someone out there has to be able to make foot long buns. Uh-huh. And I'm sure it, some ballparks have them, I, but I'm a lot sure they don't. do. Right. So it's the same with the goddamn ketchup packets. Someone there just is be like, a better good way. enough. Right. You know what? We're saving 23 cents a year mm-hmm. buying these smaller buns. Yeah, why would right. we switch? <laughs> right. Wow, that's bad business move. <laughs> but Larry, <laughs> everyone hates him. I don't care. <laughs> no, people have said they're going to stop coming here. Well, they Good. prove it. 
prove it. Fuck him. <laughs> <laughs> just super stuck on saving like a fucking quarter. <laughs> right. <laughs> on whatever that uh, that bread is. Right. Can't be expensive. No. That white ass. No. Hot no one's dog gonna. Bread. No one's gonna lose their ass. That's never gonna be a situation where it's like, well, you know, we fucking listened to Cummins, and we got the bigger buns, and guess what? We lost our entire fucking sports team. <laughs> Milwaukee Brewers. Right. They've been in the city for a hundred fucking years, and then we got these goddamn twelve foot long, twelve inch long buns, <laughs> and we, everyone was happy for about a week, and then we had to fold the whole fucking team. <laughs> <laughs> I just picture like one of the big, the one of the biggest football teams right. at, at the college level, Alabama. Right. You got the Crimson Tide. Things have right. never been better. Right. And then they go to these bigger bunts. <laughs> <laughs> and the, the fans go there. Like, half the seats are missing. Like, there's like there's a bunch of advertising all over the place. Right. Like, sections right. are closed down. And they're, they're like, sorry, we're just, we bought these bigger buns and things are really different. Like, no more Gatorade <laughs> shit. Like, their shoes are all worn. Everyone's wearing different jerseys. Right. <laughs> it's like, the home team has different colored red. Like, right. they're just different right. shades. Like, what the fuck is happening? It creates some weird slippery slope that, that people <laughs> warned about, like, that we didn't even think about. They're like, listen, I, I swear, don't fucking change the buns. Because I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. You're going to change the buns, and then people are going to notice that the seats aren't as comfortable. And then they're going <laughs> to complain about the seats. And then and other people are going to notice that the lines are too long. We don't have enough people <laughs> working in the session stands. And then people are going to complain that the field's too far away. And they're going to want to fucking redesign the seats. The and the next thing bubbly. you know, we have fucking protests. And they shut our whole fucking Stadium down. Easy, easy. <laughs> right. e- easy, Doug. There's no way that's going to happen. Uh, what, uh, watch me. <laughs> right. You heard it here. Right. You heard it here first. He's the one outside be like, fucking told you. Right, right. Fucking look at you now, Crimson Tide. He's in front of a local news camera crew, and <laughs> behind him is a burning stadium. What did I fucking tell you? <laughs> Two weeks ago, they changed the goddamn buns. And now they burned 30,000 people to death. <laughs> it was the combination. <laughs> Hold on. Hear the me anarchy. out. The, the buns got longer, and then everyone needed more ketchup packets. Right. <laughs> they needed 16 more ketchup, ketchup packets because they could put more ketchup on them now. There's, there's more room for the ketchup. statewide riots. <laughs> Two million people have died already. <laughs> it's a civil war. Why? <laughs> fucking buns. Short buns. Long buns. Short buns. Right. <laughs> That's the Civil War is over bun size? Just gunshots break out. <laughs> like two, we two, deserve better. Two years later, we're living in this dystopian nightmare. What the hell the fuck did all this start? <laughs> yeah, the, fucking, what are somebody the, started complaining about the hot dog buns. What do you get in the army? You get like the rations? And like they're, right. st- they're still pushing out the ancient ketchup packets? Like, that's all you get now to eat? Uh, <laughs> the army just has pockets of <laughs> tiny ketchup packets? <laughs> like, sorry, we're just trying to get rid of these fucking things. I don't know what to tell you. So, fuck that. Yeah. And I don't understand. They need to be at least five times as big. If you want ketchup with the thing that you're eating, there's a chance that you're going to use at least like at least three of those ketchup packets. <laughs> yeah. So, I'm, I'm calling a, let's do a petition. This is a call mm-hmm. to action. Change.org. Change the world. Tiny ketchup packets. It don't starts, like them. I'll start with you. <laughs> I mean, see you, you thumbing through like change.org and these yeah, no, huge no, no. organizations right. like Stop Cancer. Civil rights. Fight cancer. No more pedophilia. <laughs> Tired of the tiny ketchup packets. <laughs> that, that one that one actually outranks the others, and then they don't get their funding, but we get our ketchup packets changed. You know, that's a win. <laughs> that's a win. We'll help them later. <laughs> we will help. First things first. Everyone will be happier. Everyone will be happier. The top, <laughs> the top three petitions on change.org is like cure for cancer, mm-hmm. bigger hot dog buns, <laughs> larger ketchup packets. <laughs> Not in that order. Not in that order. There's no, no ketchup, way. bun, cancer. And it has to be ketchup bun. It's got to be bun ketchup. Like, cause you don't want, you don't want, you don't want more, you don't want more ketchup with if you have more bun. Like, oh God. It's the other way around. Now, now it makes you even more angry. <laughs> where you're like, I have all this extra bun <laughs> but to no fucking ketchup. lube up with some ketchup. Now I'm constantly running out of ketchup packets. <laughs> Uh, can I have some ketchup? Yeah. And that, that's, an, that's a whole other argument. When you ask, like, if you go to Taco Bell or somebody that has some ketchup and they give you two of the tiny ones, uh, like, thanks for fucking wasting my time. Right. You might more. Well, you might, should, more. You should have just flipped me off huh? and said, how about fuck you? If you give me two, like, can I have some hot sauce? Yeah, here's two hot sauce packages at Taco Bell. It's like, you can spit in my face. I might pic- as well punch my wife. Oh, my God. I'm picturing a great last day at work. It's your, it's your last hour in the drive-thru shift. You take whatever ketchup packets you have left, <laughs> and the last person you serve, you just fucking throw an entire box of like mm. me- medium salsa packets, whatever ketchup packets. Mm-hmm. Can you imagine like you're getting your car, you're getting the last thing? Oh, can I get a little more ketchup? And then you just get like a hundred ketchup packets <laughs> thrown into your face. Oh god! If I was a teenager, if I was sixteen, who, who am I kidding? I would find that so satisfying right now. <laughs> right. You'd be like, "Holy shit, that was rude!" But god, that was funny. Oh, and guess what? Tons of ketchup. At my household, we have an extra baggie in our fridge. 
<laughs> that has like extra economics oh, that they give us yeah, too much have, of. Yeah, we have a space for that too. So then if we run out of ketchup in our home, it's like, oh, thank God they gave me too many ketchups. Yep. But it'd be a lot better if they just gave me like, oh, God, at least I have this other ketchup size the right thing for what I want. Because mm-hmm. I would hold on to that as well. I think Lindsay finally threw them away, but I had like 40 soy, so- soy sauce packets. God, Aaron throws so all, much soy sauce. They throw all mine away too. Mm-hmm. And then I, I, I have mounds of evidence where we run out of soy sauce. We run out of salsa. We run if out of I ketchup. I only had a packet. And I have them. And I've sh- I mean, it's it saved our huh? ass a million times. Mm-hmm. And she'll still be like, don't want them. <laughs> Dumb. Trashy. I'm like, I don't care if it's trashy. It when works. I have my hamburger and I want fucking ketchup, mm-hmm. we don't have any. I'm not, I don't want to go to the store. I want to eat my fucking hamburger. With that 1914 ketchup. God damn. All right. Let's move on. Let's move on. All right. Next thing. Zach, fucking play it. Thanks. Bye. <laughs> That was fun. That was fun. That got me uh, got me a little fired up. Good. I haven't thought about that for a while. <laughs> uh, Logan, uh, the merch warlock, yeah, actually brought it to my attention. I was like, holy shit. Like, I had a, a design. Yeah. I drew a bigger packet. Like, I, I mean, it has to be a decade ago. It's not like this problem is brand new. It's, oh, you it's really pissed tried me off for like, a long time. You really tried to make some kind of uh Yeah. Uh, like, I was like, why has no patent. one, like, no one dived into this market and just they're just taking it over and be like, look at you guys, you're fucking dumb. I picture no your, one asked for these tiny packets. I picture your packet is you, you just draw a picture of a Ziploc bag <laughs> and then just <laughs> draw, <laughs> draw a stick guy squeezing ketchup in a Ziploc bag. Every single car gets a full-size uh, <laughs> ketchup. <laughs> Literally just a Ziploc bag of ketchup. Here's your... <laughs> it's like half a pound of ketchup. Here's your half pound of ketchup. Here you go. Here you go. <laughs> Bankrupt. <laughs> Bankrupt once again. Uh, okay, so we're doing Dumb Dumb Idiots this week, and this first story was sent in by Dummy Colton, uh, and it, it, it is absurd, right. and it does remind us of something that we have covered before on the show. Is that a Colorado? A Los Angeles YouTube competitive eater and influencer seeking to, be, seeking to beat a pizza challenge at the Aurora business says the owner accused her of being a professional competitor trying to scam his business, called her explicit names, and <laughs> kicked her off the property. Oh my God! So on Sunday, Raina Hung planned uh, planned to take on the OMG 28-inch pizza challenge at Stevo's Pizza and Ribs. The competition requires the competitor to eat the pizza in an hour with no breaks for $100. There are no rules or regulations online or inside the business that say certain people cannot take part in the challenge. Right. Yeah, this owner sounds like a piece of shit. Yeah. So surveillance video capture, captured by the restaurant and partially released to Denver 7 shows that Hong uh, asking for the pizza challenge. The restaurant owner, Steve Whelan, asked Hong if she is a professional eater when she asked to record herself eating the pizza. Hong can be heard telling Steve Whelan uh, she's done a few food challenges and adds that she uh, records them for YouTube. Video of Steve Wynn confrontation with Hong was not released, but there's a separate video posted online by Hong showing her crying and accusing Steve Wynn of calling her explicit names and kicking her off the property. Um, it just goes on to say that you know she has done and she has won 465 food challenges, wow. uh, but she doesn't consider herself a professional food com- com- competitor. Uh, she says her YouTube page is her version of man versus food. Is that how you say her name too? Is I it- think so. But that was my best guess. That was what I was able to find online. Oh, oh, oh yeah. okay. is that what she said? It how she said it online? Yeah. Oh, okay. I didn't know. I was like, Wang. Um, that's just such, such a weird thing that he would get mad because, like, okay, first off, it's a hundred dollars, right? The winner, and it's and it sounds like really difficult to do. It's not like this is happening all the time, and he, they're going to get a hundred dollars, right? And then and then like <laughs> just to go off and somebody like, oh, you're a professional. Who gives a shit? Don't, you, then you, don't put the food challenge up. And what does that even mean? Like a pro- professional eater? You travel around, you eat free food, and try to win money in competitions. And, and how many of those are there in the world? <laughs> 10, 15, 20? Like, my, he's, my favorite's Randy Santel. He does yeah? a great job. I'm just saying. Okay. okay. He's pretty good at it. Is he fucking local? No. Okay. Just, just, a, just Zach's a fan. We, we had a professional I food. I stopped watching because it was making me fat. So <laughs> just saying. We had a professional food eater on the morning show in radio. Oh, you did? And I had no idea how it worked. Yeah. There's this there's this guy who could eat an entire uh like a foot long from Subway okay. in under 30 seconds. Yee. And we were like, that's fucking crazy. Yeah. He came in and he did it like in 19. Oh my God. Uh, that's what insane. he does is you have it and you and he's put you put it, it in, in water, water, right? And then you just mash the uh, hell out of it while smashing it in a bucket of water. It can't be good for you. Nope, but it was it was down. It was it was done, and it was wow. uh, it was eye opening for me because I'd never seen it that close before. That's crazy. Yeah, it's insane. But yeah, but what? A, yeah, again, like what a weird thing for this owner. It's like yeah, whoever wins, 
I don't know. I, I just Isn't heard, that that's the whole marketing and, and scheme? Call, yeah, and calling her names. This sure. guy sounds like such a dickhead. And, and the the whole marketing play of having a food challenge is yeah. that you are taking the uh, you know the over under on the fact that more people are going to try it and fail. Yeah, and get you, yeah. you get their money than are going to try it and succeed. That's and, how a fucking food competition works. And also, if this if this uh, if this young lady or I can't remember if she was like a, a teen, grown up. I didn't say I don't. Oh, think. Okay, didn't say her age. Mm-hmm. Okay, but if this woman like if she's if she's known in that world and a popular like an influencer. Then he he's for a hundred dollars he's getting a huge advertisement for his business. If he's just nice to her, and it's like oh, it plays it up. Oh my god, here's hundred bucks. Mm-hmm. Let's get a picture together. He could have used that into a big promo for his commercial. Instead, she goes and tells all of her fans that I'm imagining she has quite a few that this guy in what Auburn, uh, Washington is no he, he's in Colorado Aurora oh Aurora Colorado yeah. th- th- this guy in Aurora Colorado is just a fucking piece of shit right and, and she did go on to say I'm not a sort professional dummy. I'm not a professional eater because I'm not part of the professional eating league and I don't compete in the Nathan's hot dog eating contest and, and she shouldn't even have to rationalize no she shouldn't what well, doesn't matter if she is a professional don't have a fucking eating competition if you're not gonna let right. people show up and fucking eat and what was the one guy Kobayashi like he was like he like won numerous times. Like, that, it sounds right. I is that know. right, Zach? You know that world a little bit. I don't know that guy, but oh, I, okay. I know what the you're Nathan, talking about. Like the, what is his name? What was his yeah, name? the Nathan's hot dog guy. Yeah, he's he, like won he it just, numerous wow, times. Like Two hundred. It's fucking insane. And that'd be that'd be another thing. If that person came to your restaurant, you should be honored. To me, it's like like when restaurants do that. Like Guy Fieri, you know, came here and they kind of played up. They get on like the food. And I don't even know. I don't watch those shows. Right. But they get on some food channel. They go to fucking Flavor Town. They go to fucking Flavor Town. That's where they go. Right. Okay. Mm-hmm. And so that that's like a big advertisement for their business. And this person just blew it just what a weird reaction it reminds me like if uh pizza factory here in Coeur d'Alene had an eating challenge <laughs> oh my god <laughs> or if, if like you showed up and you're like i would like to eat and he goes can you eat real good i uh, kind of i eat pretty yeah. good well yeah. he just gets a gun out right he goes well you don't get to do this one yeah get the fuck out of get here get the then. fuck out of here just a shotgun just for, for regular people who aren't good at eating <laughs> right. what just the weirdest it's a food <laughs> let's right here let's like, fucking stutter <laughs> It's a food challenge for people who are not good at food challenges. So fuck you. Get out of my restaurant. <laughs> That's exactly what it is. It's Idiots. 100% what it is. All right, should we move on to the next story? Yeah. Okay, this one uh, caught my attention because I have heard of so much worse. And I do have examples also on a personal level, but also because I pulled them up on the internet. So senior pranks. Oh, yeah, sorry. Fuck me. Uh, All right, Zach, take it off that screen real quick. I clicked on the wrong link. Get the oh, fuck out of there. You will sa- go, we'll saving go, that one? We'll go to that one next. I, I jumped to the wrong one. Oh, and we'll go to that here in just a second. To. Yes, exactly. So there is a Texas high school. Uh, a harmless senior prank gets half of Texas high school's graduating class suspended. And when you see what they did, harmless. you are going to be like, what? They fucking, what? Is it not harmless? No. Oh, no. It is extremely harmless. So wait, so wait. So they got how much trouble? Uh, they got suspended. Okay, they got suspended. Right. Half of tech, okay, okay, half the class gets suspended. Okay. Okay. So a Texas high school is facing backlash after administrators told half of the graduating class to put a fork in it. You'll, you'll see why that makes okay. sense. And suspended them following what parents say was a harmless senior prank. Approximately 40 seniors at Comfort High School, about 50 miles northwest of San Antonio, received two week in school suspensions for a prank Damn. that involved placing plastic forks all throughout the football field. NBC affiliate WOAI reported. <laughs> It was a harmless senior prank that all of his parents knew 100% what was going on. Hope J, uh, <laughs> who has two seniors at Comfort, told the outlet uh, they had planned as a group, you know, 40 students, which is half the senior class, to fork the field, which is putting plastic forks in the dirt. Yeah. What? This is fucking crazy. So Jay told WOAI that while many students stuck to forking the field, a smaller group went inside the school to place things like balloons, saran wrap, and cooked uh, stag inside you know, uh, our, our cook stag head inside. So they pick the things. All of this is is bullshit. Right. When you look at how bad senior pranks can be. I'm from a tiny Idaho town. Yeah. Uh, we took a crane, a giant forklift, and dropped tires over the top of all the light posts so that they can't, they can't get them off. And then had a smashed up car and parked it in front of the door so no one could get in. Jesus. Guess who got suspended? No one. No one. No one got suspended. <laughs> Because a fucking senior prank, we didn't we didn't damage the school in any way. Uh, it was really funny, uh, and there are examples of of way worse shit. I like way did, worse. Did you guys get those things back off? 
Uh, no, I mean, they, they, we moved them. I think we had somebody on standby. We had like the fork. We knew where the fork was. Oh, so was. you could move the stuff later. We could get oh, okay. rid of it. Like that was the whole point. Did you guys get the tires off later? Yes. Oh, okay. So they, you really we, didn't they just cut them any... off. They, yeah. I, I personally did not. Right. But uh, somebody just got rid of yeah. them. And there's yeah. a big rock in front of the school and you'd spray paint the shit yeah. out of that rock. Yeah. And that was the, the whole thing. Because that's thing. what I was thinking with this is like, like those forks, it's like, okay, then have somebody, okay, worst case, if you want to be kind of a hard ass about it, but really not get anybody in trouble, just ask them like, hey, okay, we're going to, we're going to, uh, during lunch tomorrow, all the seniors, please go out and pick up all the fucking forks. <laughs> right, get them back. Like, like get them back, and then then it's over. Right, like, like even that would be like, okay, you're kind of a fun killer, but I get it. You don't want to do the work, but to suspend them for two weeks for that. Right, whoever runs that school is just a fucking prick. I bet. I mean, and I don't know at all, but yeah. I'm guessing just either just got the position uh-huh. and has to be I exercise my thoughts, <laughs> right? Super over the top, yeah. So that nobody fucking sticks forks in her field moving forward, right? Uh, or she has no kids and doesn't realize that this doesn't matter. Yeah, like just doesn't. Because there's no thing, balance like, there, or, or her kids just they're so disconnected from what a normal kid would do, right? That they're like, well, oh, the devil, right? The devil must be inside these plastic forks sticking buffoons. The only defense I can think is, is somebody like, well, yeah, yeah, but I mean, you know, it's not fun having to go pick up all those forks. Mm-hmm. And it's like, okay, then it's not. Then again, you go back to like, okay, then have the kids pick up the forks. <laughs> but suspend them for two weeks? It's like, that's just absurd. It's just too... The, the punishment does not fit the crime at all. I know. It, it, it is really dumb. And especially when we look at uh, some other examples of senior pranks that went way too far. Okay. Uh, and here's the article that I mistakenly brought up last time. Uh, students dismember a cow oh. across school campus. Okay. Too far. <laughs> Release... <laughs> Of animals results in pranked peacock's death. So a bunch of students stole a variety of animals from a nearby farm and put them throughout the school campus. Okay. Maybe too far. Right. Uh, Mass seniors attack students with firecrackers and cherry bombs. Okay. That is something (laughs) that you could get suspended for. Attack students with cherry bombs. Because you could literally (laughs) permanently blind someone, disfigure someone. Mm Mm-hmm. I mean, you technically, you could kill somebody with that. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, students tie lamb to a pole and splatter paint everywhere. Okay, a bit much. So again... <laughs> Eight chickens perish in senior prank. Yes, exactly. Eight chickens. So you see where uh, this is going. Please use pepper spray to break up a prank turned brawl. They apparently couldn't agree on how it. fucked up, or what, what fucked up thing they are going to do to the school. Okay. But um, it's so funny, dude. <laughs> I uh, I actually kids try to replace all the trees and end up destroying them. Oh my god! <laughs> I heard about a great senior prank. Kyler told me. Oh uh, yeah. And the chickens reminded me. I don't know where he found this on the internet, but to me, this is like the best senior prank I've ever heard of. Okay. Because it's so simple, but so clever. Um, some kids got three chickens and they put them inside a high school uh-huh. and they had big numbers on the where chickens they belong. Or where they belong mm-hmm. but they had big numbers on the chickens like this like this wrap around thing that said like the uh, like a number on it 1 2 4 <laughs> people spent all fucking day looking for the third chicken that didn't exist God damn, that's funny. He's so smart. Holy shit. Yep, all it took was three chickens, one, <laughs> two, and four. And then I guess literally like, for like the entire, they're going crazy. Be like, we have to find the last chicken <laughs> all day long. Just the whole school is like basically shut down looking for that third chicken that was never released inside the building. God damn, who thought of that? I don't remember. Kyler told me, and I don't I don't, I don't know where he found that source. He just saw it Man, online somewhere. And I'm like, that's, that's a, brilliant. That's a smart kid. Smart kid. Oh, my, I, I, I don't want to take away credit from the kid. But I feel like it was apparent. Like came up with that? that? That's something the dad comes up with. Uh, one, two, four. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I did. I did this with you on your birthday. And then Lindsay, and it was hilarious. Lindsay said at her school, like the, or the legend of the senior prank was, I don't know how somebody did this, but somebody got this. The maybe it was like a um, not for, well, maybe a forklift or a crane. I guess it had to be a crane. But they got a hold of the principal's car, oh, lifted it up and put it on the roof. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like that's that's pretty far. That's how you get suspended. But <laughs> right, also right. pretty funny. Pretty funny. If if it was no no damage. If at there's all. no damage. If you and, don't fuck the car up. And now that we're talking about this, there was a I don't remember what dummy it was, but somebody wrote in that <laughs> for their senior prank, yeah. they went to a, a local Sinclair gas station. Um, are Sinclairs everywhere? Oh, uh, are they only I here? No, I think okay, they so might just be on the in the west. The mascot for Sinclair is oh, a giant. Is like this this depending on what city you're in, the dinosaur yeah. gets bigger. And it's like a giant green brontosaurus. Yeah, like a brontosaurus right. guy. Yeah. So they took it and they ripped it out of the ground of the gas station <laughs> and then put it on the roof of the school. That's pretty funny. That's funny. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and there was pictures of them like driving it down the road because like a normal sized truck and this thing's fucking huge. Oh. God, that's funny. I just thought about the fermented fish challenge that we just did. Don't. Why are we doing that? No, but like what if somebody yeah. got all like a whole bunch of cans of those oh fish. Oh my God, can you imagine? And leaked that juice. Into the ventilation system of the school. Or just a, like a like strategically oh placed God. lockers. So it's locked up and you can't get in without right. bolt cutters. 
in the lockers, but if you poured it into the ventilation system in the right way, like put it in the AC unit or something, or they, the smell, it would clear out the whole school. It would take them days. Like people would be throwing up in classrooms because mm-hmm. that odor is so powerful. Oh, man. This is also not a call to action. No, it's not a call to action. <laughs> well, I had a buddy in uh, high school in Las it's Vegas. It's not a call to action, but it's a good idea. He did, he did some stink bombs, those little sulfur yeah, stink bombs. Those, yeah, He did those in the school's uh, ventilation system. That's probably where I'm getting the idea. He did those in the school's ventilation system, shut down the school for half a day. Whew. And he got caught. He got, <laughs> quite, he got in quite a bit of trouble. <laughs> Who knocked him out? I don't know. <laughs> some friend they are. It's been, it's been too many years. I don't know. Uh, both those things, not the dumbest thing we were able to find this week, and we saved that for the next segment. We call it Apocalypse Pending. Thanks, Zach played thing. Thank you. It has been a while since we've taken a look at old TikTok trends. Oh, yeah. Um, but here we are once again. So plenty of dangerous TikTok challenges have gone viral over recent months, but the latest trend almost became deadly after a 20-year-old influencer said it mm-hmm. triggered a heart attack. So the craze is called dry scooping, and it involves swallowing pre-workout powder, mm-hmm. which has an energizing effect instead of diluting it with water. It's just stupid. I won't take pre-workout Fucking the right way. Just snort coke like a like a grown up. Right. Just do a little meth. Just do some meth. Like, like a it. man. Right. This shit. I, and if you've never done it, uh, and if you're not taking the right amount, this shit fucks you up. It is so bad. So the supplement is typically made of amino acids, B vitamins, caffeine, and by caffeine it varies uh, between pre workouts. But there are some that are astronomical amounts of caffeine. Right. Like three energy drinks worth of caffeine. Yeah. Like not a safe level of caffeine. Of, of, of the random drugs I did uh, w- over the course of my life, the one that scared me the most was legal at the time. And it was a... Oh, meth! No, it wasn't meth. Oh. Uh, it was a workout, pre-workout uh, pill. And it was not caffeine. Was it creatine? No, no, it was a stimulant. Oh, okay. And I'm blanking on it now. Dang, I just thought of it, but, but it was not caffeine. They, they did ban it. The FDA did ban it. And then it became illegal because it was giving people heart problems. Mm. But it just... I took like one... like Kind of like... Not like no dose, like the, the the concentrated caffeine. It was something more powerful than that. And okay. this was like back in like two thousand. <laughs> All I can it think about it is the big dick pills they sell at gas stations. <laughs> but right no. now I'm like, oh yeah, black rhino. Pill. Black rhino? No. Or whatever they call these things. <laughs> right, right. Oh, oh, giant fucking dick. <laughs> XL? No, 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 not that one. No. And and I took one and I I was truly worried. I started having like what felt like an anxiety attack. I've never really had one yeah. of those, I don't think. But I started just feeling like really shaky. My heart felt like it was beating out of my chest. I got this like cold sweat broke out. Mm-hmm. I'm like, I think I'm going to die. Mm-hmm. Like it made me super paranoid. Oh, that that stuff is not meant. And then to take it, that's just why. That's a weird like challenge. That's like, a, to me, that's like the equivalent of uh, do a, eat a pound of blow challenge. <laughs> you find a pound of cocaine and you fucking eat it. Uh-huh. And you see what happens. It's like, well, yeah, you know you're probably going to die. Smoke a kilo of crack challenge. <laughs> Let's see how this goes. Right. <laughs> oh my God, I almost had a heart attack. The, you don't say. Eat your body weight and meth challenge. <laughs> <laughs> In 24 hours, eat your entire body weight fucking full of meth. Smoke it. Why smoke, not? smoke your body weights worth of meth in 24 hours. <laughs> and if I do this, I'll get so many views. <laughs> right. So many hearts. So many hearts. Yeah, the whole fucking life is consumed by hearts. God, is that meth out of your brain? Like it, it can relate to to like a twenty year old. Anything, guess. yeah. Like those those challenges. I yeah. we talked about in the past. I think the last time we talked about TikTok challenges was about the um, the lighting yourself on fire in the right. in the shower challenge. <laughs> I'm not sure if that was what it was called, but you'd pour like rubbing alcohol all over Jesus. yourself and set yourself on fire. Yep, in the challenge, fun and, challenge, and you you wouldn't be surprised. It didn't always work out well. Why not? Oh, because you're setting your body on fire. And then That's there was why. that one where people would like jump three times. Yeah, and then kick the legs. And, but then out. after the second time, yeah, the, the uh, skull the, breaker. Yeah, they yeah, kicked the legs out the one. Yeah, and people we were getting about like that too. terrible head injuries. It's like, of course they are. That challenge stuff. I do remember doing. It's such a teen thing. I remember doing stupid challenges like that when I was a teenager, and now t- couldn't give less of a fuck. If someone's <laughs> like, "Hey, have you done this challenge?" No, nah, I don't fucking care. <laughs> okay. Like, oh, come on, man! What are you afraid? No, I just I think it's fucking dumb. Must have missed it. Like, like the, the we did the fermented fish, which is close to a challenge. But that to me is like, but that's something people eat in part of the world, and it's just difficult to eat, and it'd be interesting to see if we could eat it. Sure, that's we, different. Yeah, we than knew just, it was terrible, but we knew yeah. we weren't going to die. Right. And neither one of us were punching or kicking each other's legs out. But that's different. Like some and of them was set on fire, <laughs> right? Which is great. Some of these things they call they call challenges are just it's just something that's blatantly harmful. 
Like that's not a challenge. It's just stupid. Right. Because because you can you can Ugh. apply that term to anything. You be like, all right, guys, listen up. It's the fistful of gravel challenge. What you do is you grab a fistful of gravel and you chew it up and swallow it and see if you can hold it down after ten <laughs> seconds. Just some whatever nonsense. <laughs> and, and then people it, are like, it broke my teeth up. <laughs> yeah, you fucking dummy. Right. It's a fistful of gravel. <laughs> Hey guys, if you ever get less than three teeth replaced, you win. <laughs> it's the baseball bat to the face challenge. <laughs> yeah. What you do is you close your eyes and you hold still and you have your friend hit you as hard as they fucking can in the face with a baseball bat. <laughs> and you try not to cry. But isn't that going to really mess my face up? Yeah, that's why it's called the baseball bat challenge. It's like nonsensical. <laughs> if you wake up, you win. Yay. It's, <laughs> it's the pint full of mortar oil challenge. <laughs> right. <laughs> and someone's like, I don't feel very good. Yeah, you sure don't. <laughs> you just fucking drink a pint full of mortar oil. You're probably going to die. That's the challenge. Oh man, I just pictured pooping out motor oil. Oh my God. And how happy you would be in that situation. Like, thank God it's leaving me. <laughs> so if, if I was going to talk to my younger self, mm. and, and I know we have younger listeners, if you're worried about a challenge, you're do like, it. this could really hurt me. Don't listen to Joe. Oh, if just, you, if just don't. Just fucking just don't. <laughs> I promise you, years from now, you're going to be like, why the fuck did I even consider that? <laughs> right now, if you have that one friend who's like, oh, bro, come on, what are you fucking pussy? You got to fucking do this. You're not going to care about that person at all in like 10 years. Or you're going to be that person and no one's going to care about you. <laughs> Yeah. So just, just just fucking get that person out of your life. <laughs> keep keep track of all the ones that are doing these challenges, mm-hmm. and let's just see where they go. Right. The, the one kid who does like all of the challenges, uh, he might, he might have sixty million views on mm-hmm. TikTok. And I'm just curious what job he has. Or I would say I, I would say that person, uh, like over under odds of them making it to the age of forty, they get about a ten percent chance. <laughs> Ten percent chance of making it to forty and not being in prison. If you if you're following these TikTok challenges, right. I'm going to say there's a ninety eight percent chance you're doing meth for fun, <laughs> like not even for a challenge. Like that's just a life choice you've made, right? <laughs> yeah, don't, don't do don't don't do these challenges. Maybe call me judgmental, but I think I'm right. I'm just I'm just looking at yeah the safety angle. <laughs> Maybe oh you're old couple, boring couple dads and yeah, there. but you know what? I'm fucking alive. <laughs> okay, boomers. Oh, f- I know we're boomers, fuck but you, you. but you know what? We're living boomers. <laughs> So in the flesh, you can't lump. Like, I can't, am I a boomer? Even though I'm, I'm a fucking boomer. like a uh, millennial or whatever I am. You're you're probably not quite a boomer. Neither, I'm, neither I'm a boomer. of you. No, not I, I'm like I'm like the last year that's wrapped into being a millennial. Eighty five. Yeah, I don't even remember what I am. X X generation. I don't care. You're yeah. fucking awesome. Nineteen forty six to nineteen sixty four is the boomer generation. Oh, I'm not a boomer. Oh, no, no, fuck. Not, not, even, even, close. not even close. Not right. even close. Well, Zach, you just played yourself. Thank you, Zach. What about me? <laughs> Nothing. Kiss All my right. butt. Hey, next thing. Let's do One Star Heroes. Yes. Thanks, bro. I get no respect in real life. Always am upset. So I let them know I hate them on the internet. Yeah. Yeah. My nose is itchy, and then I itch my... Oh, itchy nose. I itch my nose, and then I mark up my glasses. Oh, you're a mess. Okay, well, you just, just entertain us. Sweaty mess. Entertain uh, us. This, this comes in from Amanda Oaks, who found this One Star uh, Heroes. And, and this is... This product, it does have some one stars, and we will talk about this. What's funny to me is it's just a super weird chair. It's called the OFM Core Collection Morph Series Soft Seating Sofa in Slate. Not <laughs> reviewed well. Only 17 ratings. Uh, no longer available, and you're going to find out why. That is a people weird hate chair. it. 3.2 out of 5 overall, but everybody hates this. All the five stars are super sarcastic reviews tearing this apart. And it just made me laugh thinking about it. Like, somebody had this chair designed. They, they, they're, they're excited to see what the public thinks. They put it up on Amazon. Everyone fucking hates it. <laughs> and I'm going to show you something. It's a super weird chair. Here's a little video about it. Oh. Now, what's funny is this. This is the video that comes up when you kind of click on this either videos, 360 viewer images, and it's showing you OFM's core collection not included is this item. <laughs> so on the description page, so they were for embarrassed this item, too. They, yeah, they had this whole cool little poppy presentation of all their products. This is not listed among them. So, <laughs> they didn't. They didn't have a lot of faith in this thing. So let's look at it. Three sixty view. That's a weird commercial, anyway. It is weird. So. So here's this weird, it's like something you'd find in the airport. It has like, like a little if, power plug. Yeah, it's like if you want no friends. So yeah. and, and what If you hate, you hate looking at anybody yep. outside of the TV. Yeah. To describe this it, couch is for you. To describe it to the people just listening, it is, it has, it's, um, 
people compare it to something you'd find on a train or in the airport, but it has these blinders you can raise on the sides and the back so that you could be sitting in this chair and you would only be able to see directly in front of you and no one from the sides or the back could see you. So it's like this privacy chair, this it's, privacy it's, couch, but it's for two people. It's a cubicle for your living room. Yeah, it, it, yeah it's very cubicle-like. Hmm. And so uh, here is some images. I'll have to go. There we go. Okay. So just, yeah, last little images again. And now we're going to start with the five stars. These are oh, some boy. of the funniest five stars I think I've ever seen. Okay. Salvatore. Five stars. If you wear blinders, then this is for you. <laughs> I work as a carriage horse in Central Park. <laughs> <laughs> so wearing blinders is a must. When I get home and remove my blinders, I've been known to get sensory overload overload, and mule kick my furniture and lamps very costly. This couch totally eliminates that terrible peripheral view so you can concentrate on watching your favorite shows like BoJack Horseman. It's pretty funny. <laughs> Next one, five stars. KF. I do love that show, too. I, I, I gotta see it. It's pretty funny. The only thing that could make it better is if it was even smaller. <laughs> Perfect for feeling claustrophobic. That's <laughs> There's not enough places for me to go these days that will make me feel closed in like this couch does. <laughs> Sometimes I just can't get lucky enough to find an elevator where there are 50 other people. <laughs> or I just want that feeling of not being able to breathe and being really uncomfortable. <laughs> also, I love not having space for my arms because it gives just enough room for... <laughs> Pinging your elbow, funny bone, which adds to the experience. Major win. <laughs> 735 people found this helpful. <laughs> of course they did. It's so, so many, funny. So many people have, I think this has gone a little bit viral on Amazon. So many people have come just to rate the reviews. Mm -hmm. so, okay, another five star. Van Cruz, would you just look at it? <laughs> at first I was like, what in the hell is this? <laughs> but after looking at it closely for a while, I was like, hmm, what in the hell is this? <laughs> 309 people found this helpful. <laughs> no, not a single five-star review is actually praising this product. Oh, man. Nobody it, likes it. It is weird. It is weird. Another five-star. Alex Ryswick. Bring the airport home. I finally have the comfort of the road in my own home. I spend a lot of time in the airport lounges, and they always have something like this for me to relax in. The problem was, when I got home, how was I supposed to relax without a couch cubicle? Oh, perfect. Problem solved. He gets it. He gets it. Another five star from Hello. Give it your best shot. If you ever miss being on a train, just get this couch. I choo choo choose this couch forever. It's a good couch, a loyal couch. Brought to you by Amtrak. Can't get no better than this couch. I like him. <laughs> Another five star. I think this is the last five star. Stuart Clary. Must have for going to the movie theater during COVID. It's like movie theater seating for your home. When theaters do reopen and they ask how many seats you need, you can say, it's okay, I have brought my own. I just will need 10 people to help bring it in. Uh, One star now. Right to privacy. Companies got to be a front. Companies got to be a front. The stupidest product I've ever seen priced over a dollar. Uh, now, this one star is not that funny, but this is the only other one star, just to read. Uh, one star, Richard J. Read the real re Read the real reviews. I've read the reviews and must say they are not adequate. After a long day, I come home, but the blinders aren't tall enough. <laughs> Maybe I'm just a rare breed that stands above others, but they barely come up to my neck. I got a second opinion, and my buddies Clyde and Dale agree with me. <laughs> so another silly one. I wish that the, the person who wrote that in, what's the uh, the Toys R Us giraffe? Is oh, that yeah, Jeffrey? Yeah, Jeffrey. Jeffrey. The, Jeffrey I think the it's Jeffrey. That would have been a funny review. Uh, blinders aren't tall enough. It's <laughs> <laughs> a picture. Hi. Hi. <laughs> this is out of... I mean, granted, there's only 17 reviews, but the <laughs> only one that was serious was this two star. Okay. <laughs> I just love AT, two stars, limited space sofa. The sofa is not spacious and it's not as comfortable as advertised. If one person wants privacy, I suggest to just get the one seat because having two seats, customers cannot really view something or do something privately. The sound can still pass through because there's extra seat counted as empty space. If customer really want quiet and private environment, this sofa is never. This person is so fucking stupid. <laughs> if this is a two person love seat with the privacy thing around it, and and they don't understand why when you're sitting directly next to someone in a small box with no divider between the two of you, you're not having a fucking private experience. <laughs> yeah, because there's not a fucking extra divider in the middle. You fucking moron. You need a, you need a splash guard. Like with all these, like the three sixty degree view uh -huh. all the pictures i just i'm blown away that they seem like they seriously don't get how well yeah i mean i guess it's <laughs> private for one person but when you have someone else sitting directly next to you in a small box you're not private from them 
Yeah, of course not, because it's not made out of fucking magic, you dipshit. <laughs> right. like, what's wrong with you? Uh, what a weird expectation for this product. Like, the only way this product would make like make sense to me uh, even makes it more weird. Yeah. And that's if the privacy went all the way around this couch. Where, like, you were there with your loved one. <laughs> right. And then you're watching a movie and your friends are there. Because uh-huh. <laughs> if no one's there, you don't need the privacy. Right? <laughs> right so right. it's only there because other people are there, they're going to see you. Right. So you're about to make out and you're like, you have like a little motorized, like, me. <laughs> <laughs> lift the screen move a box that yeah. encloses the entire couch around you <laughs> right i mean i'm guessing like how goofy is that i'm guessing this is for like the office i can't see this that doesn't being, fucking matter i can't see this being someone's home unless the tv is one foot away from your face right everyone else can be see whatever screen you're looking at doesn't right make any it doesn't sense. provide much privacy no it's just maybe for it's it's more for you not to see what other people, people are doing. Right, it's blinders for the the horse at the park. <laughs> right, it it's is like the blinders thing. It's like it's like it's like at the office you're putting time out. If it doesn't see me, uh, if I don't see it, it can't see me. Like that kind of <laughs> right, out of sight, out of right. mind couch. <laughs> so ridiculous. <laughs> God, it's dumb. And then just people tear it apart. It like in the little question answer section. It's just all all negative. Of course like, it like is. People are like, no, oh, this is stupid. Uh, I don't. I don't know what I'm even looking at here. <laughs> like, there's nothing, and and, I, and that's why I think it's currently unavailable. You can tell like they threw it up here. They're like, you know, the designers say this is good. Let's see what happens. And I just picture like the owners of this company checking it like a weekend and be like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> everyone hates it. Fucking, it's become a internet joke. Fucking told you. <laughs> oh yeah, that'd who, be great. Some couple who approved this. It's like J- Jim and Nancy, and then it's like I don't know, Jim. I don't think people are gonna like it. I think people are gonna make fun of it. <laughs> no, 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 no. This is a great privacy option for the office. And then just a week later, fucking told you. <laughs> fucking told you. Look at all these jokes. Our company's a fucking laughing stock now. <laughs> Nothing but horse jokes. What would they do? I don't. I just don't see. I cannot even wrap my head around a, a, a place that it makes sense. There's not even a place. Right. It doesn't work at home. It doesn't work at the office. Yeah. It works if you take yeah. two of them and put them to, to face each other. Right. Then four people can look at each other in some awkward train car. DMV. DMV, maybe? DMV? For what, though? I don't know. I picture like, oh, That's the, perfect. The most... so, so as you move down the line, if someone comes sit next to you, it's like extra awkward because you're all in the same box together. Like Ugh. you're sharing a, a dinner booth. What a tense office environment a bunch of these would make. Mm-hmm. Like what a sad, negative kind of atmosphere that would create. If you had like, okay, you, you get some office space. There's like uh, 15 employees working on the computers, but there's not room for anyone to have offices. And, and, 15, and you one person is going to get their own privacy couch. Well, no, That's no. dope. And oh, you, and, and you can't get you know uh, all the cubicle stuff. Oh, okay, gotcha. so your compra- you have these little islands of like these things back to back, just scattered around, kind of like meshed around. So there's like four of them on a little island, and so four people are sitting right next to each other. They can smell each other's farts. They can hear each other's keyboard typing, but they can't see or talk to each other. <laughs> like what a dysfunctional, weird little environment that would create. It's perfect. It's the, it's the COVID couch. This is perfect for people that are going to go back into yeah. society but don't want to see anybody. Right. And, and and two at a time is extra weird. Yeah. So like in the office space, that would be – so there's like, uh, okay, an island of eight people where four groups of two, two people, each group is crammed into each other mm-hmm. and they don't have space to work well individually. They're too close but also separated communication-wise from everyone else. It, it, it really is just such a stupid idea. <laughs> like you're right. There's there's no place you're like, oh, yeah, this would be the perfect weird boxed-in love seat for this situation. I would like to track down the designer and see what else he has made. <laughs> what other what other ones have he, has he persuaded companies to, to be like yeah let's go hard in on this thing just his weird like pitches it's a clock with blinders <laughs> right so you can only see it from the front it's the upside down office cubicle <laughs> you have the chair on the ceiling and the person is strapped into the chair <laughs> and then the, their computer is glued to the desk and that way they get like a uh, better blood flow to their now 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 uh uh-uh. now this uh-uh. is just really stupid <laughs> next okay this is the blinder collection <laughs> nah still dumb not as dumb as the last thing but still dumb okay this next desk is always on fire <laughs> it's called the always on fire desk and it's got razor blades and it's made out of it's made out of you sit on the razor blades <laughs> and as soon as you, it detects your body weight it shoots up flames and burns you <laughs> fucking what do you have a <laughs> nervous oh, breakdown what's going on and then inside of it there's fireworks <laughs> right. so with a certain amount of your blood uh drips down below the chair it'll shoot off two mortars <laughs> right. uh, and then everyone knows that you're happy <laughs> <laughs> and then everyone knows that you might die it's a warning system that you're bleeding out <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or all, all, his only pitch Ever is just put blinders on shit. So he has he has like a he has like a, a pencil cup with blinders. 
Like he's not really he's doing just anything. He's stuck in a blinder <laughs> space. Blinders just on. adds blinders. It's a computer with blinders. And then, and then, you, and then you're, t- you're talking to somebody else about it. And you're like, this is really stupid. I mean, all these things are just fucking blinders added to regular stuff. No, I know. But Jesus. you should have seen what his last phase was. <laughs> like what? His last phase, he had snakes to everything. <laughs> it was a, it was a desk, but it had snake snakes desk. on it. Snake desk. It was a chair with two snakes that fucking sat on it. It was like everything. <laughs> like, how does he have a job? Before I don't that, know, he's the boss's <laughs> nephew or something. Before that, everything was a cannon. What do you mean? <laughs> You hear me out. You sit down in the chair, and they would shoot you fucking through the ceiling. And the problem is, is that he is—he's their process kid. So we're buying all the shit, and I'm lucky to be alive. <laughs> oh, it's just, it's I love like, the guy that has nothing but really stupid ideas. And he has to, yeah, that's so funny. And I picture him just like, like he works so hard on presentations. Daddy, daddy says I'm smart. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I'm gonna tell Daddy about all of you. Just and then just like storm throw does the weird sidearm run like a little kid storms little out of the arm. office. <laughs> I'm sorry, we just and then you have to explain to the boss. No, we're not trying to shit on his ideas, Steve. Yeah. We just can't have everybody sitting on fucking seats made out of razors. <laughs> I mean, think about the goddamn liability. Look, he points to the window and says, look, everyone's heads are through the ceiling. <laughs> <laughs> look what happened. Our entire accounting team has their heads stuck in the fucking <laughs> right. attic. Like, what are you... <laughs> The, the computers aren't in the attic, Jim. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> and they're just kicking their legs. <laughs> it's not. It's just not a good idea. Uh, I don't know what to, I have to tell I you. Tell you, we can't You're do fired. it. Again. <laughs> it is a good idea. I trust. I trust my boy. <laughs> uh, nice work. Nice mm. work. Let's uh, let's get on out. Get on out. Next of thing. Here. Happy news. Happy news. Happy news. Sliver of hope. So our sliver of hope, the good yes. news for this week, was sent in by Dummy Charlotte, but it was also sent to, I'm, I'm giving her credit because she sent okay. it in way before, uh-huh. but then it kind of made its rounds and uh, a lot of dummies sent it in after that. Oh, okay. So if I don't credit you, don't feel bad. All right. Uh, Pokemon sends gift to boy who sold card collection to save his puppy. Pokemon. So this was a Aww. follow-up story. Uh, and we'll just get into it here. Bryson Kleeman, uh-huh. an eight-year-old boy from Lebanon, Virginia, uh, Virginia, got the attention of the Pokemon company after his selfish act raised the money his family needed to save their puppy, Bruce. Kleeman sold his Pokemon cards that he loved, but he now has some special rare cards to replace them sent to him from Pokemon employees in Bellevue, Washington. That's awesome. So he didn't know... Obviously, that he was yeah. going to get replacement cards. Yeah. He had the he had this collection Aww. of rare Pokemon cards, uh, and just try to do everything he could to raise the money to save, save his the little puppy's life. And what was going on with his puppy? Okay, well, let's get into it here. So, Kleiman's mother, Kimberly Woodruff, took Bruce to the vet when Kleiman noticed he appeared sick, according to local news WSLS. The pup was diagnosed with parvo, oh, a yeah. serious canine disease, and the cost for his treatment would be nearly seven hundred dollars. Knowing that his family couldn't afford Aww. the bill, Kleiman took it upon himself to his Pokemon cards to help pay for it. That and, is the best. And I love, and I mean, yes, it is great. And I, I would have read and presented the story if yeah. the if the Pokemon company had n- no fucking yeah, rebuttal. Yeah, yeah. They didn't find out about it. Right. That's enough for me. But goddamn, do I love a story where the company finds out yeah. and goes, thank you for being a, a, an amazing person. Yeah. It reminds me of the... Um, uh, the Ocean Spray. Remember the guy that was on the longboard? Oh, board? yeah, yeah, yeah. He and, down in uh, Southern Idaho. Yeah, down in uh, Idaho Falls, I yep, believe. Yep, uh, may, I think it's Idaho Falls. Maybe Pocatello. Yeah. But that area. And uh, He's still big on TikTok, I think. Yeah. He took the following and hopefully he's capitalizing yeah. on it. But they sent him a ton of Ocean Spray and gave yeah. him a new truck. He was longboarding to the Fleetwood Mac song. Uh-huh. Yeah. God, that track's fucking banger. What was the name of that track, too? It's the best. I don't know. Whatever, it's that whatever, best, that, whatever the best song Fleetwood ever is. Max, I'm going to look it up. Fleetwood uh, Mac Ocean Spray guy. Fleetwood Mac Ocean spray. Yeah. Oh, I, I spelled like half of the words. Oh, correct. it'll come up. Okay, here we go. I think it's like dreams or something. Yeah, something like that. Oh, I don't know the name of it, but here's the video. Uh, oh yeah, dreams. It is dreams. Yes. That is such a good song. Such a great chill, like summer song. Look at that. Oh, look at him. Look how many plays. Yeah, one point eight million. Is that what it is? Yeah. yeah. Ah, uh, wonderful. God. Whenever that track comes on, I turn it up. I don't care whose car I'm in. Mm-hmm. I don't give a fuck. It's just like, like oh, you guys, are, you guys are talking to me. It's a really important story. Uh-uh, it's going to have to wait my, my three mom, and a half My minutes. mom's sick and she might die. Yep. <laughs> this song goes up. Finish this afterwards. <laughs> That's how much I love that song. It's a good one. Uh, okay, yeah. Well, thank you, Charlotte, for sending that in. And thank you to all the other dummies who did send it in. I found some cool shit on the internet. You want to take a look at it? Nope. Okay. Uh, play the ender. Play the show ender. Let's round this up. Let's do it. 
The internet has all sorts of neat things. Anything you want can be yours. Let's take a peek, together, as a couple. To you, from internet. This is something I never, ever thought about. Uh, I didn't know. I, I have a hard time Birth looking. control. Hey, <laughs> hey, I only I have know. two. Okay. And sure. I've, and. Because that joke doesn't work. If I didn't yeah. care, I'd have like 40. Because right. I've had sex 40 times at least. Nice. Get over nice. Here. High five. This <laughs> is, no, a, a classic game like tic-tac-toe. Yeah, okay. I, I just never would have thought about this. Uh, and they call it Goblet Gobblers. And it's tic-tac-toe. But they have these different pieces that can eat other pieces that are on the board. Ah. So as you're laying things down, if your piece that you have is bigger than the one that exists in that space, then you just put it over it. Kind of like oh. the Russian dolls in a sense. Yeah, yeah. So just because somebody put one down in the middle doesn't mean like they get the space. You can put down your bigger one. And then if you have one that is, you know, the biggest, then that one can't be, it can't be taken. What's the age range of this game? I don't know, but it's pretty complex. I know. I'm sure there's sure a, little toddlers. It, it's, it. it's made for kids, but oh, man. the... Uh, they would destroy I, me. I'm sure there's a way... Anyway, this just shows you how it's played. And typically a game takes only about two minutes to complete. But I did explain how it works. Basically, you that's, put a, the, that's a good game. You put these things down. I know, isn't that genius? I never, mm -hmm. never would have thought about that. They've upgraded Tic Tac Toe. So you can lock things in. Uh, it just it, it almost it takes Tic Tac Toe and makes it 3D. Yeah. In a sense, yeah. it adds it adds levels instead of just a 2D playing field. I know because Tic Tac Tic Tac Toe is one of those annoying games where it's like at least with my kids they like they thought it was fun for a little while and then they realized that if we both actually tried to win that it's a tie every single time. Oh, there's do you be there's some, there's some pretty good if if you are if you get some spare time. Mm -hmm. uh, I know that you don't have a lot. You don't have very much going on in your life, <laughs> right? Uh, but if you get some spare time, if you look up some tic tac toe strategies, what? There's ways that you can fucking win it. You can psych people out. Mm -hmm. huh. like, it's all about it's all about this certain triangle, huh. and depending on where they go, it dictates where you you're going to go. I always thought it was a stalemate, no matter what. Nope. Like there's ways that if you get if you get three moves and they don't go in like one of two places, yeah. you can win it. Interesting. Mm -hmm. So I'd look into that. Tic Tac uh, Jedi over there. This, <laughs> I just love kicking the shit out of my kids. I can't win at chess. I can win at Tic Tac Toe. <laughs> That's all I got. <laughs> Don't take it from me. And here's just a crazy video. The music isn't that important because it's just like a, a meme video. But here's a woman who hit a bear to Whoa. save her dog. Oh, I heard about this, but I haven't seen it. Okay, here you go. That's a big ass bear. Yep. Oh my God. I thought it was a little black bear. That, that looks like a brown bear. Oh, yeah. So this music doesn't matter. Oh no, Look. it's small. Whoa! She shoved the bear off the wall. That's awesome. And then the bear's coming back. She grabbed the dog. And she's, okay, the bear ran off though too. Isn't that crazy? Let's that watch, was let's watch awesome. One more time. One more time. Dogs are running to get this bear. Oh, the bear's got cubs next to it. Woo! She runs out like, get the fuck off my wall, bear! <laughs> okay. Oh my god. I will say that is it's brown color, but that's like a what you would call a black bear. People might refer to it as the brown bear. It's not a grizzly. At it's first, no, it's not. At first, coloring-wise, I thought it was a, gr a grizzly. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> a lady pushed a grizzly? No, it's a small bear. But still, it's a bear. I mean, you could get it. I mean, it was on a, a tiny little dividing wall. Yeah. I mean, you could probably push a grizzly off there, but if that grizzly it, got it, one swipe on you, it's gonna, it's gonna, I... It's, that that one oh, the dogs oh, all live and you die. If, if a grizzly was on, yeah, <laughs> dude, if the grizzly dude. hit you once, it might yeah rip your. It's gonna fuck you up pretty bad, <laughs> dude. I I hope that I never, oh, man. never have to come across that. God, I've carried bears I love the outdoors. outdoors. I love the outdoors. I've seen bears oh. in the wild. They're fucking huge. I've read so many bear stories. Black bears, I don't give a shit about. I, I would black I would bears cuddle, never. I would cuddle a black bear. <laughs> black bears, I mean, they're just not aggressive in almost any circumstance. Like, I mean, yeah, that thing of you between like them and their cubs, but even then, they're generally really not aggressive, mm. and they're not enormous. Grizzly bears, there's just so many stories of those things just toying with people. <laughs> Where like they'll like chew off half their face, and somehow the person still lives, and then they'll just like you wander off for an hour, come <laughs> back, fucking slap them around a little bit more. Like they just terrorize people. <laughs> God. God. Uh, what a fucking nightmare. Anyway, the video for Bear Push Wall Lady Sounds will great. be uh, in the episode description. All right, let's get towards the end here. Let's hear from you dummies. <laughs> It's junk mail! 
That sounds like the theme song for that TikTok toe, like the gobble goblets. Oh, yeah. They say, I don't know. Oh, before I forget, we hear the listeners. I do want to say this weekend, I'm going on this big, crazy climb with Monroe. What? That I have not. The one that you put off from last year? The one that I put off from last year. So I'm finally doing it. We've talked about it here before. Finally doing it. So hopefully this isn't my last show. Mm -hmm. Because I kept thinking I'd have time to train. I'd have time to train. And I was like, next week, next week. And now I'm just like, now nah, just see what happens. <laughs> so I'm not going to train at all. Okay. Well, we we will get an update if you have no idea what we're talking about, because uh, we've talked about this. It might have been like in single digits. Yeah, of early this show. on. Uh, but he, he's heading to Riggins, and it's a certain hike, and we'll talk about it. Yeah. Uh, I you know, week. fill everybody in. Yeah. If it go, if it goes great, I don't want to fucking hear about it. Oh, okay. But if you have a terrible time, please. Uh, there, there's a good chance it might be terrible. <laughs> good. Yay. I'm gonna be limping in here next week. That's a business move. <laughs> <laughs> That's what that is. I hope your shoes give out and you break your knees. Oh, man. Your knees are broken. Oh, your, God. Your foot falls off. Something like that. Uh, your toe gets more infected. All right, oh. so junk mail. Our first piece of junk mail coming in from Dummy Roman, who writes, Hey, Joe, you and Fred were talking about toys going missing that were likely thrown away by your parents. Remember that? Oh, yep. We were like, oh, yeah, where'd my favorite sword go? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't know. Oh, no, no, no. And then no. years later, you're like, I know what you fucking did. Uh, when I was 11... My Nana bought me this really hard plastic machete. <laughs> I totally forgot it was a machete when I brought up the sword thing because I had a sword taken away from me. So Roman, it was a machete. This thing was so dangerous as a, uh, this thing was as dangerous as a real machete. After it, I took a sizable chunk out of my sister's bedroom door, it mysteriously went missing. Cue to me learning my whole house or, or tearing my whole house apart, looking at it for you know three weeks or so. Never did find that machete, but I did find my dad's stack of Playboys in the back <laughs> corner of his closet. I also found found his three boxes of every Playboy dating back to January 1973. Nice, that's some bush. That is, you know, some of those might be worth uh, some money if they're in, if they're in. Uh... <laughs> collector's kind of uh, condition. It's hard to keep a Playboy in mint condition. I know. You're going to get some crinkly pages. <laughs> Did you, you ever just, I, I never understood that. And it might pages? just be a joke. I never would just I, I never, I never, I know. That's, that's the joke, but I don't think I, no, I don't you know remember Do anybody ever. out there is like flipping pages like, fuck yeah, and just coming well, in a Playboy and being like, shut, and just closing it for the night? I don't even remember how I know this, and I swear to God, this is not that it would matter. I've talked about so many fucking weird sexual things. But, uh, not it's not something I did, but there was something. There's something online where certain like models, like porn porn uh, stars or whatever, will sell pictures of themselves. Like like uh, a cum shot it? picture. Yeah, it's a cum shot picture. Like a Target. So it's like no no. It's like a it's like a genre of porn, I guess, where then people will post their pictures of them coming on a picture of some gotcha. buddy. Okay. So there are people that that's their fetish where they like to they like to come on photos. Cool. These days it could be like on a phone. That's oh, gross. Oh, yeah. I don't want to borrow your phone ever again. Is that your fetish? Uh, January 1973. That kind of play. It could be like a like a pop up. It just covered it. It's like bush, bush, bush. It looks like this landscape. It looks like a landscaping yeah. book from afar. <laughs> yeah. Needless to say, I wasn't interested in finding the, that machete anymore. I had found my new favorite toy, and I never looked back. The moral of the story is: parents, be careful about throwing away your children's toys because you uh. never know what they're going to find while they're looking for them. That's funny, dummy Roman. That is very funny. I, I I didn't bring up when we were talking about parents getting rid of stuff. My mom also did a weird thing with just a few of my toys. She like weirdly held on to me still having them like until just recently. Like specifically this little Star Wars case I had. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've talked about that before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My mom, she finally, I gave her enough shit. She finally dropped it. But I had to be like, mom, the, the toy, the, half of them were missing. They're beat up. That's not how it works. It was never kept in the box. It uh -huh. wouldn't be worth anything. But she would, I would be, I was like 38 years old. She's like, so, uh, I mean, you got those Star Wars, right? Mm -hmm. You got those. Like for a while there, I was picturing her just on her deathbed. And I'm like, I'm like 60 years old. She's Is like, there anything less you want to say? The Star Wars figures. <laughs> Tell me. Tell me, you just, they, they gotta be worth something right now. How pissed would you be if it just embedded itself in you and that's the last thing you said to your kids and family? Find my, find my old Star Wars figures. <laughs> they gotta be worth something. Like, what? Dad, no, they're not. They're not. You, you, you made fun of them the whole time you were alive. Dad, we looked it up last week and even though they're 60 years old, they're worth $17 total. <laughs> right? Well, they're, they're mangled. Well, use it towards my urn. Spend it wisely. You're welcome. <laughs> You're right, you're it's welcome. my gift to you. They'll help pay for my pillow. <laughs> for my, coffin, my casket my, pillow. My, my fucking coffin pillow. All right, so our next and final piece of junk mail is a fucking nightmare. Oh. And this is a fun one to read. My God. Uh, Dummy Verity writes, huh? Hello, all. Hello. A little late to the game. This is, Okay. Whew, this is rough. Okay. A little late to the game, but I thought I would share my cow punching story with you. 
It might not count as punching a cow because I, it wasn't in the face. It was more than uh, you know, it was more than punching. But I have about ten years of experience working on dairies. I worked at a dairy while in college, and one of my jobs was as a milker, the person who, you know, of course, milks the cows. Yeah. Most dairies are set up so that you are, san- uh, yeah, sanding in a pit. And cow's udders are at chest level. Are at chest level. Oh, that makes okay. sense. Okay. okay. So one time I was attaching a machine to one of the older cows in the herd. She's old, uh, had big club-like feet and a wonky-shaped udder. Because of her udder shape, if I described a woman having wonky-shaped boobs, she would <laughs> I get punched. Not good. I catch a purse across the face, but I'm going to see if I can get away with it. So because of the utter shape, I had to lean uh, really far under her to hook up the cups on the far side. As I'm leaning over her, he, she shifts her foot and places it right on top of my boob. Not what? only does she refuse what? to move, the foot she actually begins to put all of her weight on the foot that has my boob underneath it. Can you imagine With this cow so squishing foot, the hoof? <laughs> the hoof is on her boob. Right. Oh my god. <laughs> okay. Oh my god. So I can see the other foot raised partially off the ground, no. so that she can, uh, you know, efficiently crush my poor tit. Oh. A half ton animal is standing on my breast. I'm sure it's going to pop. No, I'm freaking my god. out, pushing and punching, and she won't budge. So I realize the next part is animal cruelty. But I was panicking. I yeah. ended up stabbing her multiple Fuck times yeah. with a pen before. She finally releases me. She's lucky I didn't have a knife, to be honest. Yeah. Funny enough, then I had my own children and started breastfeeding. That boob never produced very well, oh, which no. I find pretty hilarious. At least she's funny about it. Yeah, she's, I guess I'm. Uh, I guess I'm more prepared for mammograms now. Oh Dairy cows God. had a pretty shitty life, to be honest. So I can't blame her. Fight the power, girl. Fight the power. <laughs> Thanks girl. for all the great content, uh, content and shows. I really enjoy the listener stories. They are very, you know, cathartic. I liked. Uh, hey, I do dumb stuff, but not as dumb as that person. <laughs> Cheers, V. V. I'm a so- cow. Ah, oh. I don't know if it's the same. I'm so I mean, worried about her titty. I know, but I just put my I put my balls in the same spot. Oh. I don't know if that is a fair comparison, but I feel like uh. it's got to be close. I mean, a ball would pop easier, I would think, for sure. But I, but oh, I just think, just like, fucking. But it's, it's got to be so different. I mean, ooh. not having a boob. I mean, I would think it's more tender because it's just like this fatty tissue. It's, just a, it's a bob. So vulnerable hanging out there. God. And, and, if, and if it's stepping out, I'm guessing she has larger breasts. So, I mean, they're, they're, <laughs> they're bigger than like A cup because otherwise it wouldn't have. <laughs> It wouldn't be able to be stepped on. I'm sure. It, see, it sounds that like that just sounds so it's bigger sensitive. than like a C or a D. I guess it has to be a big. It's a big. It's a boob. It sounds like it's a boob. Yeah, at least a C, probably a D. Because she'd be standing like on your entire chest if it was any smaller right, than that. It could hurt your ribs or but, but right. like, but just out there, you're you're standing in this pit. You're kind of at chest level, so your boob is just kind of resting on the the where the ground would be. So uh, she had to on reach top over. So you're reaching over this, and then this cow shifts its weight, steps on your tit. <sighs> That had to have been excruciating. And cows, I've heard, uh, I don't know if there's going to be cow Love lovers out there. on tits, from what no, I, I understand. I've heard cows are just so fucking dumb. <laughs> yeah, and just are. And just oblivious. But I just can't believe, had to stab it with the pen several times before this dumb fucking herd animal thinks like, Man, I don't like that. <laughs> Ouch. Ow. Man, ow. Oh, man. After several stabs. In the first couple stabs, stabs like, all you got brain. was like a... Like another jolt, the foot like m- moved a little bit. Right. Step back on your boob in a different spot. Oh, it's a nightmare. That's why I said that. Yeah, that was that was. I don't even have a boob, and that hurt my boob. Mm. I'm glad I don't have boobs. I have phantom boob pain now. <laughs> Ouch! Oh, oh, Ooh. Ooh. We get a little bit older and we gain some more weight. We can have our own titties. Yeah, I can. Have, I, I can't can wait. Have, I can have some titties. I can. Man, I hope I don't have. A, I don't. I hope I don't have a man titty big enough for a cow to step on it. That's goal. It's nice life goals. Life goals. Like, I don't care you know what, what happens from here out. You as long well. as I don't get my man titty stepped on by a cow. If you if you have a man titty big enough to get <laughs> fucking cow stomped, then you've uh, you've enjoyed some good food. <laughs> you have. You've enjoyed a meal or two. Yeah. There's something to be said for that. Heifer is that what they call them? <laughs> I, I, like don't a know. Man, uh, I think so. Heifer on your man titty. <laughs> <laughs> if your man titty, can a get, if, I never your, thought. <laughs> if your man titty can get heifer stomped, <laughs> then you've lived a life. <laughs> Then I'd like to I'd like to hear some restaurant suggestions from you. Like that's where I'm going with that. <laughs> like tell me your favorite place to eat. If just you got a, a fucking heifer titty stomp, it's like a weird T-shirt. <laughs> if your man titty, if you've if you've had your man titties heifer stomped, what a life you've led. <laughs> just like, like and put it in quotes, <laughs> right? So people are like, who the fuck said that? Abe Lincoln, <laughs> Dan and Joe, <laughs> Dan and Joe. That, and that's it. My that's good all bikes. the shirt says. Good friends. Quotes. If you've had your man titties heifer stomped, you've lived a good life. Dan and Joe. And people are like, who? What the fuck? I used to like call it a heifer stomp. Like, I don't even know what they could. Whole array of things they could step on. 
<laughs> if you got yourself uh, in that situation. Anyway, thank you, V, for sending that in. Yeah, thank you. All right, you. you ready to wrap this shit up? Yep. Okay, let's do it. Hey, Zach. Yes, sir. Okay, I am happy you're here. I'm happy to be here. And it's good to hear your voice today. You've done a good job. It's been done lovely. Good job. Thanks for not stinking up the office this day. Oh, yes. Yeah. For breeze the fuck out of it. Thanks to Zach Flannery for producing and directing. Zach Cohen. So many Zachs in my life. Creating some of the custom music beds for a show. I'm not kidding. I have like 14 that I talk to. <laughs> it's just, we got to change some names. It's ridiculous. Thanks to Logan Keith, pumping out the best merch in the podcast game. All the merch we have on the website right now is fucking terrible. Wait for the ones to come. You got it. <laughs> uh, badmagicmerch.com or iswedumb.com. Our Facebook and Instagram, you can follow us at Is We Dumb. They are growing every day, along with our private Facebook group, Is We Dummies, moderated by Liz Hernandez and the All Seeing Eyes. The video versions of everything we do here at Bad Magic, it is available on YouTube. Given that, you know, no malfunctions. Yeah, yeah. And we should, fuck, I hope we're good today. Oh, boy. <laughs> Just Jinxed go to it. Yeah, fuck me. Uh, go to YouTube and search for Bad Magic Productions. If you have some segment content, send that to dumb at iswedumb.com. If you have any questions about us and Zach and Logan, or our kids, yeah. I don't know, you can ask me a question. Huh? Info at isbedumb.com, uh, and then rate and review our podcast wherever the fuck you can. That's it. Hey, I thought you, you did a great job there. Thanks so much. Mm -hmm. You're, I'm, I'm going to try to make you laugh. Okay. All right. Zach, let's do a dad joke. Hey, you want to hear a joke? Wow. Make dad joke. <sighs> okay, I'm ready. Okay. Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay. What did the drummer call his twin daughters? Uh, uh, and a one, and a two. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Your reactions make me laugh. That's silly. Okay, that's funny. That's and a one, and a one. <laughs> <laughs> that is pretty silly. That's silly. That's a, that's a good dad joke. That's a good dad joke. All right, we'll see you guys fucking next week. Goodbye. Yes, we Magic Productions.